new toy, a circular saw with a laser, no less, for actually guiding it. And the interesting thing about this is that it's a cordless. Um, and it fits in with the rest of the range of uh, tools I've got that use the Ryobi OnePlus battery system. They're decent enough tools. Not super mega high profile tools, but they're pretty good. They do do me fine. And I wondered how on earth does a battery pack this size, um, a lithium pack, deliver enough power to run things like circular saws? So I was a bit inspired by a video by Julian Illett where he opened a similar battery pack and I wondered, is mine similar inside? So um, let's open it. Now it's got security screws, it's also got a wee rubber plug and a bit, well a plastic, hard plastic anti-tamper plug so best way to get those out is just to push a screwdriver through them and hoik them out. Yes, that's the warranty void but such things are of no consequence so I see four screws, one, two, three, four, and one in the top here. Um, they're anti-tamper Torx to discourage non-technical people from opening the battery packs, which is odd because the only people that will be using the battery packs will be technical people. So. Uh, I would have used a more appropriate screwdriver, these keys aren't ideal, but uh, I was looking around thinking that I had a set of these bits and I don't, so um, they're obviously over in the workshop somewhere. They're not here. So um, let's... Uh oh, this is not coming out quite as easily as I want it. They're quite stiff screws in fact. Oh, here we go. Hopefully the others will come out. Ooh, they're tight. They'll come out as easy. I'll just loosen them all off. Because they seem to have been put in quite snugly. Oh, that's better. Up to the point I saw Julian's video, I thought the inside of these would be a solid sort of stack of the flat lithium cells like you might find in mobile phones. But um, no, apparently not. Well, I don't know what's actually inside this one until I've opened it, so let's, uh, let's keep taking these screws out and get it open. If it is anything like the one I've already seen, then it actually opens up the possibility of replacing the cells in them. Um, although, if uh, you buy the cells off eBay or other sources or anywhere on the internet, you just never really know what you're getting. Now, this is actually rated um, 1.3 amp hour, which seems lowish um, I'll just keep taking this as the last screw now hopefully this won't just fall to bits in my hands the screws are all identical length which is quite nice ooh crikey So everything just slides completely out the top part there. Uh, circuit board inside for charge control and I can see already that it uses 18650 style cells. How can I get this out? Does this come out? Is this screwed in? It's been okay. Make, make a note of these little side catches. Don't know if these come out. They seem to be attached. 
Ooh. Oh, they are attached. They're um, plastic hot, plastic riveted in here. They're, they're uh, staked in. So they're the wee smear catches. Okay, well that's uh, all that out of the way. So what have we got here? We have a cluster of five 18650 style cells. Now in the terms, uh, in the numbering system 18650, the 18 means 18 millimetres in diameter, 650, or in this case it just says 1865 means 65 millimetres long. Um, these are LGD, oh right, okay, LG Daha 11865. So that's LGD AHA 11865. And I think that's a very standard 1,300 milliamp hour cell, uh, rated more for high discharge currents. And if you look at the size of the connections in these, uh, they, it certainly looks like it's going to pass a lot of current. Um, two components which I'm guessing are MOSFETs. This battery pack, when the voltage is running low, there's a chip in here that can detect when one of the cells is starting to go below below its uh, maximum allowable voltage, and uh, or should I say minimum allowable voltage, and will turn it off. And I'm guessing that's what these are for. Um, and these are IRF 1404Z, or Z as you guys might say. Which, if I recall correctly, is a really high current hex FET. Hex FET being a type of MOSFET where it's actually a huge hexagonal array of small MOSFETs and it means you've got a very low on state resistance. In this case, these are not logic level, so these are probably looking for a 10 volt minimum drive to turn them on, on the gate. And I would say these are most likely, if I recall from that type of MOSFET, it's going to have a very low on state resistance of less than 4 millohms, that's less than four thousandths of an ohm, pretty much a wire link when turned on. And a ridiculous current handling uh, up to surges of about up to about 200 amps. They're mounted on what I thought there was a custom um, aluminium, not an extrusion, but a custom casting, but um, it's that not, it's a piece of flat aluminium that's been intricately punched out and then folded. And interestingly, the middle pins of these, which are normally the outputs, I think, are floating and they're bridged together on the aluminium heatsink. And with this little plate here, which comes down to a pin, which isn't very big at all, unless the actual heatsink's uh, making, no, I don't think it is. So are they using them? in some sort of parallel array, I don't know, should I say a series array, I'm not 100% sure why they've done it that way. Certainly the one connection here goes to the negative, I think that's negative, yes. And the other one is the charging one, uh, going to the output which will turn that off. So I wonder if both of those have to be on. Oh that's quite odd. Quite an odd arrangement. Hmm. Um, <coughs> each set of cells, each joint uh, between each link in the cells has a wire going onto the board and that's going to the monitoring circuitry to so it can monitor each individual cell individually. And it can turn the whole pack off if one of the cells starts going too low. And that will also probably regulate the, the voltage at, uh, while charging as well. The chip probably has the intelligence to allow selective charging of each cell. Or maybe it's just monitoring for the shut-off point, uh, and maybe it just shuts off the whole pack, uh, stops it charging uh, as soon as the first cell reaches um, its sort of upper 4.2 volt limit. Extra contact here, which uh, the chargers use. I'm not sure what that is, unless it's dedicated to it's probably the main difference between this uh, uh, pack. I would guess that's the charging current contact because these packs can be put into the traditional um, chargers that were designed for lithium, uh, not lithium, nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium cell uh, packs. 
and they only had these top connections, so they only charged through here. So I'm guessing that this is to identify it, at least identify it to the charger as a lithium cell, maybe even uh, take the charging current. This is quite odd. This link here, uh, on the positive, has a big hole through it with a mica underneath for heat resistance. I wonder if that's a last resort fuse and it just actually physically blows that link open because these things look like they're capable of really high current. The whole cell system actually just screws together as two blocks uh, once you've removed the circuit board. So it does open up the possibility of getting tabbed cells and replacing them yourself in a, you know, maybe uh, to rejuvenate an old pack or even just get one that's been destroyed by someone at work and just um, put new cells in it and effectively get yourself a new pack. Assuming you can get the decent cells, just buying the cheapest off eBay is not going to get you the best cells. There's uh, two wires going down here onto this little plus, this little uh, foam cover. Then a little goopy silicon cover. That looks like it's just a thermistor to detect the pack temperature. So this outer, uh, this first layer of silicon there is probably just thermal insulation for that. And then this foam is just to hold it in place. And that's really about it. It's nice that it uses these um, 18650 cells. Um, it does open up the possibility of being able to serve it, it yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite neat. Let's see if I can get one of these clips back in. They're spring loaded. Yeah, it goes in alright. I'm not going to start screwing the thing back together right now, not uh, with the camera running, because it just would be a bit boring. But there you go, that's um, that's what's inside our IOBE OnePlus 18 volt lithium ion pack. Oh, one other thing worth noting, the one that uh, Julian Illett opened um, was rated uh, about 2.6 amp hour, and the only difference was that whereas this one's got 5 cells, the other one had 10, but they were bridged across as pairs, no individual monitoring, pretty much the same circuit board, but just bridged um, across as uh, parallel pairs uh, and then all hooked in series as a group of uh, five pairs. Yep, pretty neat, quite like that, pretty good.